Star Wars, the poster child of space opera for generations, versus me, a gaming monk. I do this to myself. If you can make yourself more than just a man, if you devote yourself to a night, and if they can stop you, then you become something else entirely. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Miltra and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Star Wars. What can I really say that hasn't been said already? Making a summary of what it is, its themes, its contributions, and so on, is so beyond my usual scope. Never mind that anything I could say has already been said a dozen times over by people more qualified than me. There have been entire essays and novellas written on it already. Now I'm not doing this to stroke Luke's ego, there's plenty of people to do that, but rather to show the sheer scope of the work and its influences therein. This is a franchise that's inspired countless people as both fans and creators. It is amusing in hindsight, I will say, that the work that was crafted as a pastiche of things Lucas liked or was interested in has received similar treatment in the decades since. The more things don't change, I suppose you could say. And of course, with that inspiration comes the desire to play around with that universe, bringing us to a much more familiar setting for this series, role-playing games. To date, there have been four tabletop RPGs made with the Star Wars name. One by West End Games, two by Wizards of the Coast, and the current one by Fantasy Flight Games. Over the next few weeks, I will be covering all four of them individually. One thing I want to make absolutely clear, though, is that I have no intention of ranking them. This is not a contest of best to worst, but rather comparing the strengths and drawbacks of each. With that said, tune in soon for the earliest and first endeavor in 1987 by West End Games.